Adam Yates goes far up the road. Nobody seems to care. Ryan is losing everything today. Roglic may be struggling. This was potentially the hardest stage of the Vuelta, certainly to date from Matril to Granada. They do three very, very difficult climbs, 4,500 meters of elevation gain, finishing in Granada, including two repetitions of the Hazelanas, which is about 25 minutes at 10%, including severe ramp pass. But the breakaway had Adam Jates on 9 minutes 27 GC, which sounds like a lot, but that's only about five minutes from Primoz Roglic and much closer, three, four minutes to others, including Carlos Rodriguez, who has a teammate in the breakaway working, Oscar Rodriguez, with the break. There's two other UAE riders in there, Soler and Vine. Everyone seems happy to collaborate with last year's Tour de France podium placed Adam Yates as if he's just some random breakaway hunter. The peloton, we didn't see the full break formation. They seem to not care. And the gap is out to about five minutes at a certain point. It is brought down in the run into the first climb, Perche, and immediately UAE say, thanks, fellas, for the ride. Marc Soler gets to work, drops just about everybody except for Godou, Kung, and a few others. And all the rulers that might have been of use to Bora, to Movistar, to Visma, to Ineos are promptly dropped and are unable to help their GC leaders. Now, for Roglic, it matters less. He's ahead of Marskus, Shelmoza, you name it, on GC. And it gets more interesting when Aliotti's pacing and Carapaz attacks. He's got James Shaw up the road as well as Darren Rafferty. So he's got two teammates. Danny Martinez is dropped. So suddenly for Red Bull Bora Hansgrohe, they're not just controlling Yates, they're controlling Carapaz. And they got one less rider they might have expected to do it. So Aliotti, he cannot pace quicker than Marc Soler on the first repetition of Perche because he's got to do the next climb, Hazelanas, as well. And Movistar, as I said, they had Nelson Oliveira up the road. They could have dropped him back, particularly when Carapaz is up the road joining a teammate to pull him on the descent because Carapaz very quickly goes ahead of Enric Mas on GC. Yates is potentially going to go ahead of Enric Mas on GC, or at least get a lot closer. And Oliveira won't be able to help on 12, 15, 17%. Aliotti, he also had to do the whole descent. Magnificent ride from him today. But again, it's not Red Bull or Ben O'Connor's and Decathlon's problem, really. As I said, Decathlon, they got 10 minutes just about on Adam Yates. Uh, so they put VPP on the front. I just, I guess sort of for appearances to keep it roughly under control to keep the stage moving. But yeah, two very strong riders who've been on the podium of Grand Tours recently, Carapaz and Yates up the road. First rep of Hazelanas, Carapaz goes clear of his teammate, goes past Kung. Vine was pacing, obviously quicker than the peloton could pace for Adam Yates. And now nobody has any teammates except for Red Bull. They got Vlasov and Lipovitz and actually Decathlon, Felix Gall for Ben O'Connor. Maybe Tiberi was still there with Haig. I'm not sure. I don't think so. And Vine. He was pulling all out, and Yates goes up the road again. It takes 58.5 k's to go with the peloton at 4 minutes 50, and he would extend his gap by two minutes from that point when Lipovic starts to take over. And again, Roglic can't isolate himself. So Red Bull can't pull all out at the same pace as Yates. I expected him to lose a bit more time on the descent. Carapaz, despite having uh, Godou with him and Castrillo, he loses time to Yates on the descent, who did a very, very good descent. And now it's the man who was in the breakaway originally, Oscar Rodriguez, pulling with Yates, having to pull now behind because, yeah, it's a problem for Carlos Rodriguez, GC, and Red Bull were not going to blow up their team just to control that gap shorter. Now, I'm showing you this in full. The left right into the base of Hazelanas is very technical. You then, you go, obviously, big ring. You drop your chain very quickly in the, the corner with no tension on the chain. It's where gaps can happen, and that's what I think happened uh, to George Bennett. He drops his chain, and there's riders all over the place. Lipovic starts to accelerate on the really steep sections, and he goes too hard. You see Vlasov is in the bin. O'Connor's on Roglic wheel. Mars is there. Kuz is sixth wheel, just losing a little bit. So Lipovic accelerates really hard. Lander, Van Aetvelt, Felix Gull, and Rodriguez entered in bad position or just didn't respond to that acceleration. And look at Felix Gull. Look at where he comes from this position. It just zooms past everybody. Kuz cracks as well as Vlasov. And all of a sudden, 
Libovitz has done Roglic a disservice by dropping him off the wheel, and there's no hiding it. O'Connor saw it, Mas saw it, Sivakov saw it, and now Libovitz looks back and sees it and thinks, oh no, I've just put my team leader on a gap, and O'Connor begins to accelerate, and they can all smell blood in the water. On the, There's 5Ks to go for Yates. There's probably 7Ks, 6Ks to go on these steep slopes. Enric Mas attacks, drops everybody except Sivakov initially. Roglic, though, recovers really well. He actually takes over pacing from Lipovitz, uh, as you see Rodriguez and Lander coming back. And look at Felix Gall just choo-choo across to his team leader, O'Connor, in the red jersey. But yeah, as I said, like Rolic didn't blow up completely. He started pacing at a good pace behind Mas and Sivakov. I just think he didn't... He clearly wasn't comfortable on the super hard pace that Lipovic set originally. And Orlando comes back. Rodriguez comes back. Felix Gall starts pacing because now they've got to control three guys. Mas, Carapaz, and wherever the hell Adam Yates is, who's moving up into the top three on GC, now ahead of Roglic on GC. Mars even heads, gets ahead of Roglic. He took a minute on this climb, more or less. I don't know if Felix Gull could have gone quicker uh, or if he just set his maximum pace. Yates was surely going to win the stage with no problems on the descent, and he'd already done this descent a first time. Could Mars keep his one-minute lead on the group behind him to be rewarded for his efforts and attacking and being the strongest on the climb from the GC group and he nearly comes a cropper without the lay-by to the right-hand side. He would have gone over the barriers, holds it up, continues somewhat unabashed and you can see the last 6Ks of this stage are false flat downhill and unfortunately for Mars, they're chopping off behind Roglic, Landa, Rodriguez, O'Connor, Lipovitz, all pulling full gas. But for Yates, it's a huge stage win and also brings him right back into GC. Carapaz, who wasn't on screen for a lot of the time, a massive second place. Mas is caught in the last couple of kilometers. And because there was four bonus seconds up for grabs, Ben O'Connor is able to actually extend his lead on GC. But Yates wins the stage, 3.45 ahead of the main group. Carapaz, 139 behind him. Here is what the Briton had to say after the stage. I never suffered like this before. It's so hot out there. I mean, I... From the last climb, I was cramping full, and I didn't know if I could go. You know, I've had a lot of bad luck over the years in Grand Tours, and I really didn't know if I could make it, but I'm just so happy I could fucking finally win a, another Grand Tour stage. But in terms of GC, crazy stage. Carapaz now into third ahead of Mars by three seconds. Yates into seventh, not far behind the podium either. He's 30 seconds ahead of Carlos Rodriguez. And we're only getting started. First week of the World Tour in the books. Hope you enjoyed it and see you on Tuesday. Ciao.